Hi, welcome. Thanks for joining me this weekend. This weekend, huh? Already messing up. I'm nervous. I am so excited actually to be here and to be sharing with all of you everything I can possibly get out in a quantity of time about fascia. In this video, you are going to learn about fascia, why you're hearing about it, who's stretching it, and I'm going to show you how to do it. There's so much information about fascia out there, but it's still very confusing. What I'm going to do is go through some basic information about fascia so you have a better understanding of what it is and why I'm so passionate about having you learn how to stretch it. Fascia is connective tissue and it runs throughout our entire body. It is what gives us shape, support, and function of movement in combination with our muscles. Basically, when you think about fascia, I want you to think about the entire body as an entire web. So imagine your entire shape. Then think about your muscles, your bones, your tendons, ligaments, organs, everything, and take them all away. When you take away all of that, you would still have your shape because that's how ingrained and throughout our body fascia is. When you think about it in that sense, it's a really big deal. The reason we really haven't known about it for so long is because a lot of times when scientists were trying to research the body and how we function, they focus a lot on the muscles and the bones. When they're going through medical school, oftentimes they will go through cadaver lab and take out and push away the connective tissue or fascia. When that happens, you're missing a big element of how we move as human beings. Not only is fascia super important for how we move actively, physically throughout our day, but also mentally and emotionally. Currently right now, we're in crazy, unbelievable times. And what I'm so happy to share with you is this work because it can literally help you release a lot of stress and tension that you might be holding throughout your body due to the current situation we're having. So thank you so much for being here and for supporting me, for being open to learning about something that truly is the future of stretch. A little bit of background about myself. I'm Erin Teets, for those of you that don't know me. I have a background in medical exercise. I was also a dancer growing up in Minnesota. Through my experience, I developed a chronic injury. I had overstretched stretched my hamstrings on my right side for years and years and years as a dancer, which led to the chronic tearing of my hamstring attachment on my butt bone or my ischia tuberosity. When that happens, my body lays scar tissue down to protect me from overstretching, from injuring myself further, which is a very good thing. But when we think about fascia, we have to also think about scar tissue because they actually are intertwined and work together very synergistically with our functions and movements. That being said, when you think about the fascia, basically I want you to imagine an orange. When you have an orange, we know there's a lot of juice in orange. How does a juice stay, stay suspended in that orange? By membranes. So all that little fluid that's encompassed in a membrane is suspended in that shape of an orange. Fascia works very much like that. It encompasses all of our human bodily fluids, water retention, all that kind of stuff. If we were to lose our fascia and keep all the rest, we'd be a puddle of water in our feet. There's so many different ways to think about it. I'm just gonna offer you a couple different ways to approach the mindset of why it's so important to stretch the fascia and keep the fascia healthy as we go through life. When you think about that network, not only is fascia a layer, you think of your skin, you have layers of fascia with different fat throughout and other substances in between those layers. Then you have muscle, and then you have tendons and ligaments and all the other stuff that goes deeper and deeper. However, it's not that simple. Outside of it being a layer, it dives down into the muscle, it wraps around every single muscle fiber. So think about that for a moment. Every muscle fiber in your body is wrapped around with fascia. So again, super important in the health of our entire body and our movements. As we age, we decrease hydration in our bodies. When that happens, it can affect our fascia. Also, um, 
injury can cause issues with the fascia, scar tissue due to surgery, post-op scar tissue, proper and improper imbalances in the muscles, improper posture and body mechanics, all of these lead to that health of that fascia decreasing. Healthy fascia moves very smoothly with the connection of the muscle and the other layers of fascia. As we age, that distribution of lubrication between those few layers gets distributed in areas that isn't so consistent with it, for, with it when we are younger. As we continue to move our bodies, that gets reinforced. So we get kind of dense fascia, we densify our fascia, which is one of my favorite new words I think I created, or we have scar tissue that's laid microscopically throughout. When that happens, think of it like Velcro. So we're actually minimizing our ability and efficiency of proper movement between all of those layers. Fascia stretching takes that lubrication from the ends and all those other places where it's becoming dense or sticky and it helps to move it back into that youthful fluid motion between all of those layers. That's a little bit of the anatomy and physiology about fascia. If you're diving a little bit deeper into this, I recommend going online and doing a quick search. I'm going to be posting a different links to my website, which is going to be linked in my profile as well, which is fascia-fix.com. And you can check out some of those links. There's really good information out there, but it's ever growing. Why are we just hearing about fascia now? Why didn't we hear about it? when we were younger, when we were athletes, when we were coming out of injury, or just why didn't we stretch this way in the beginning? Because we didn't know. Forever, the human race has been active from cavemen, hunting gathering, every single phase of life, there is action and movement in our bodies. And now in our current modern times, most people, if you ask them, hey, how do you feel? A lot of them will say, Oh, I know, I'm, you know, I feel good, but my shoulder hurts or my knee hurts or I wake up feeling stiff every day. None of those things really have to be there. If there's a true injury, yes, that can definitely happen. But when you think about just the aches and pains that start to build up in your body as we go through life, I believe truly that that doesn't have to be. And the reason I say that, because it used to be for me. For many, many years, I probably the last five years, I'm like, oh, I'm stiff in the morning, I'm achy. Since I've been fascia stretching, barely say that anymore, which is so exciting. All of a sudden, now that I don't feel that way, I have more motivation to get up and to go for a walk, to go to yoga with my friends, because it's so fun. But in the past, I didn't do that so often because I was always nervous about how I was gonna feel. So going back to my testimony and why I'm doing this, most people who are passionate about what they're doing is because they had a moment that changed their life forever. And that happened to me. As I said, I was a dancer and it was who I was, my identity. And that injury, that hamstring being teared away from that issue to porosity, that scar tissue being laid down throughout years and years of overstretching led me to stop dancing. I had chronic pain in my glutes. So what had happened was my piriformis, which is one of your glute muscles, started to be compromised because of the strain I kept adding to overstretching my hamstrings as I continued to dance, as I continued to be active in ways that my body wasn't allowing me to be anymore. Have any of you been there before? When you're all of a sudden in the rhythm of your life doing the thing you love to do and something stops you and something nags at you, a knee pain or hip pain. That's what it was for me. And so I stopped dancing. And it was a huge change. And for a lot of people, when you take away something that you love, oftentimes what ends up happening is you lose a little bit of yourself. And I didn't even realize how much this injury was causing that to happen for me. So going back to the science for a second, I have scar tissue on my issue tuberosity or my butt bone. I have strain in my hamstrings, inflammation everywhere, and pain in my glutes. I tried everything. I was lucky enough to work with the most amazing physical therapists in New York City for 10 years, and they were also kind to do amazing work and try to help me. I would have moments of relief, and then boom, the nagging, discomfort, pain would be back. And I give up. I said, you know what? I've tried everything. I guess I'm just gonna have to learn to live with this. 
But slowly along the way, I stopped going to yoga. I stopped going for walks. Driving in the car and sitting was super uncomfortable. Didn't want to go on road trips. And slowly and slowly, that just started to weigh in on who I was becoming until I discovered resistance stretching. I learned about the Genius of Flexibility, a studio in Santa Barbara, which I am forever, forever grateful for, through Oprah Magazine. Yes, Oprah stretches her fascia all the time as well. And I needed something to re-educate myself. So I went and I got level one certified in New York City. During my course there, I let them know, hey, I have this chronic hamstring tear. I have glute pain, hamstring pain all the time. And the instructor who I was working with was absolutely amazing. So if she's watching, hi, Bonnie. Um, she worked on me for 10 minutes. There was two people helping her do the work while she fascia stretched my hamstring and the attachment on my ischial tuberosity or my butt bone. I had tears streaming down my face. I had enough medical background to know that she was exactly where I needed her to be in that stretch. In that 10 minutes, that was it. She was working directly on scar tissue. I got up and I was able to do a forward roll and touch my toes completely pain-free. And that was four years ago, and I've had no pain since. I still am working on bringing back the health of my glute muscles that were disrupted during this journey, and that's getting better every day too. And that's why I'm here. I want everyone to experience fascia stretching because it is truly the future. I, I keep saying this, have we been doing it wrong this entire time? I think maybe yes. Stretching is not a bad thing. If you do yoga or Pilates or anything where you stretch, or if you're working out and you add your stretches, still do them, they're great. But don't push it, don't overstretch because your body will say no thank you and it will tell you to stop by actually doing the opposite effect, laying that microscopic scar tissue, densifying the fascia, and in turn, decreasing flexibility and increasing aches and pains. So that's a little bit of the basic element of fascia. Connective tissue throughout our body, it plays a role not only physically how we move, but also emotionally and how we feel, how we deal with stress. And also, it's very, very deep inside. It wraps around every single organ, so we have deep fascia. That can affect our mobility of our digestive system, how we digest our food, how our liver functions, all of those organs also are connected. The system is amazing. And the chance for you to learn about this is here. And I am ready and willing. Please comment if you have any thoughts from what I've already shared with you. If there's anything that you're questioning right now, you can always personal message me. You can check out my website. I also have a face, or I'm sorry, a YouTube channel where I post specific fascia stretches for different areas of the body along with some 20 to 30 minute flow classes. After I finish chatting for a few more minutes, I'm gonna go onto the mat behind me and we're gonna do some fascia stretching from top to bottom. I'm gonna stay pretty basic with these so that as I'm describing them, I'll give you the opportunity to really get a feel for that. After we do that, I will save this to my news feed. So if you want to share this with any of your friends that feel like they might be benefiting from it, they have some aches and pains, and this could be a help for them, that would be great. So who is doing this? A lot of people are catching on. You have a lot of practitioners out there doing myofascial release, and they use tools oftentimes to do that, which are awesome. And if you have an opportunity to do that, go for it. Cupping, rolfing, all of those techniques. Foam rolling, ITV band, that's fascia. Plantar fasciitis in the bottom of your foot, when you have the balls that you roll on, that's fascia. So there's all these tools, right? But you don't need them. They're helpful, they're not bad. But I wanna give you the opportunity to be able to do it yourself, anytime, anywhere. That's my goal, and that's what I'm gonna be able to show you tonight. This work is being done on athletes, NFL players, Olympians, young athletes, post-op patients from recovering from surgeries. You name it, this work is benefiting everyone across the board. Dancers, Pilates, Pilates instructors, people who take clubs, participate, yogis. If you're a hiker and you have tight hamstrings, or maybe it's actually your hip flexors or quads that can be an issue, this is for you. This is meant to be complementing whatever it is that brings you passion in your life. If you're a yogi or a dancer, whatever it is, adding some fascia stretches into your routine every time 
every day. I promise you're gonna feel better. You can target certain areas, specifically like the chest or the glutes or the hip flexors, or you can take a full flow from top to bottom just on your mat with some tea, kombucha, wine, music, you name it. Every Tuesday, I am on Facebook Live at about 10 or 10.30, I will advertise before if I need to shift my schedule considering schedules are a little bit crazy these days. But that's where you can find me, Tuesdays live on Facebook. Also, I have that YouTube channel I mentioned where I have a host of probably about 50 videos right now. Working on the content quality, which is on its way, so you can find me there too, and at Instagram as well. And last but not least, what can you expect? You can expect to feel better. If you do this with me tonight, you will feel better, you will sleep better. You have more option to use your muscles efficiently when you clear out the dense fascia that's in the way. Those are a few of the many benefits that you can increase in your body with fascia stretching. So let's get stretching. Like, smile, give me a thumbs up if you're liking the information that you are hearing so far today. And as I continue through the class, I'm just gonna wave at you guys now and just let you know I'm so, so grateful that you're here and you are with me and learning about fascia stretching 101. All right, I am gonna do a little adjustment here so that you guys can get a better picture. Now, I know it's a little echoey in here, so I apologize for that. There will be improvements to come. Hey, Dan Kasner, hey, Mom. Nice to see everyone. What we're gonna need to start here first is a mat if you have one. If not, that's fine too. I often use a small pillow or a blanket or towel wrapped up for doing a few things while laying on your back. I'm gonna be starting in the chair today. So if you have a chair where you're sitting that your feet can be flat preferably, grab that as well. While I set this up, you can go ahead and get yourself set up as well. I'm gonna have a little bit of my tea from my new favorite belly. I'm gonna meet you on the mat in just a minute. So fun to see all of you guys joining me. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about this work. All right, I'm gonna check these out and make sure everything's looking good here. I had a little bit of music, but I think it might be out now, so I apologize. Well, you guys had some good music vibes going on in your house. Hey, Dad. All right, I think we're pretty much set up here. Okay. All right. I'm gonna do one more little adjustment just for a moment before I go down. Shorten the area that you want to stretch, 
you add activation or contraction in the shortened muscle, you move in the opposite direction. Shorten, contract, move. It's that simple. Your body will communicate to you, but if you're feeling something that doesn't feel good in the moment, try to micro-modify it to see if you can shift your position slightly to, that it feels better for you. If you're having pain and it's not a good pain, stop what you're doing, send me a message, let me know what it is, and then I will be able to help you out later. But for the purposes of today, then just watch the, the remaining stretch and then join back in with the next one. We're going to start with our head. Plant your feet. Go back to that 50-50. Engage your tummy ever so slightly to give yourself support. We're going to stretch the back of our neck. A lot of people are holding a lot of tension in their neck right now, which is a safe thing to say, I think, considering what's happening in the world. To shorten this area in the back, take a chin tuck, not where you're looking down or up, but straight back. And you're going to tilt your head up onto the diagonal to shorten the muscle in the back of your neck. Hands are going to come up behind your head. If this is uncomfortable for you, you may grab a strap or a belt and put it behind, not your neck, but the back of your head. So I'm on this angle. My tummy's tight. You can be sitting against something or sitting upright. I'm going to just gently resist my head back into my hands. Pause there. I want you just to feel that for a moment. Do you feel the back of your neck? Once you do, let your arms bring your head forward all the while you're resisting it back. You have control the entire time about how much resistance you use. Two more times, chin tuck, tilt up, shorten the area in the back of your neck. Resist the head back into your hands. Use the strength of your hands to bring your head forward, bringing that chin towards your throat as you continue forward. Go as far as you can, where you feel the resistance continuing, not stopping or falling off. If it does, if you lose your resistance, that's when you know to stop. One more chin tuck, look up. I offered myself a little bit more movement because I felt more space after the first two reps. Tummy's tight, plant your feet. Head raises back, hands move the head forward. I like to also mention that this stretching isn't passive. You are working. You're working your core and you're working the other parts of your body that are doing the movement in the opposite direction. For that last one, I'm strengthening my arms as I'm stretching my neck. We're going to move on to the shoulders. I'm going to move a little bit more here. For the shoulders, think about back here. Back of the shoulders. Tighten those traps underneath your shoulder blade or your scapula. How do we get there? Oftentimes, classic stretch, we pull across. Fascia stretching is opposite. We're going to open the arm to the side, shortening the area in the back. Reaching over with your opposite arm, grabbing between your elbow and your wrist. You're about shoulder height with your arms. Open as far as you can to the side where you can reach with the arm that's going to do the work. We shorten the area in this straight arm, and you're going to resist into that shortened area by resisting your arm in the opposite direction. Once you feel it in the back of your shoulder, use the strength of your other arm to pull it across. Not to the end range, but just before. Open it without resistance. Resistance goes out, pops. Make sure that you feel it. There's a whole layer of this where our nervous system is involved. If your nervous system is not able to communicate with the shortened muscle to add that resistance, that means you have dense fascia or scar tissue in the pathway that you're working. So it's probably good to do it. Open, resist the arm out this direction, keep your tummy tight, keep planting your feet into the ground, open to the side. Let that arm release. That's your first real example of what that fascia stretching might feel like after doing it. I typically do five to ten reps, but for purposes of today in education, I'm going to do three to five. Switching to the other side, arm up, palm down. Take the other hand, grab between the elbow and the forearm, and open up that arm to the side as far as you can reach with the other arm. My resistance is going back with the, with the arm that's straight. Once I feel it in that shoulder blade area, 
He brings the student to the side and uses the strength of the other arm to come across, not to end range. Open it without resistance, raises the arms to the side, draw it across. Let your breath move naturally. Sometimes I can cue specific breath in and breath out, but because you're moving slow in each repetition, just making sure that your breathing is key. Even better to do the breath in and out through the nose. One more time. Feeling that resistance, keeping it the entire path. Let your arms release. Take a deep breath in. Big exhale out, let it go. One more time in. And exhale. Taking a moment in between to let that nervous system ground. It's going to get the information down to the fingertips through the area you just stretched. We're moving on to the chest and to the subscapular muscles or your shoulder blade area. We have a lot of muscles underneath those shoulder blades and they get tight, really tight, and they can get achy, that space between the shoulders, that whole area. This is something you can do anytime, anywhere. I love this exercise and structure. I say exercise because it is one too. You're getting your energy built up and the blood flow in your body while fascia stretching the chest and those subscapular muscles. Take your hands to prayer, touch your thumbs to your nose, and pull your thumbs about three inches out in front of you so you're looking at your hand. Gather your posture by pulling that chin towards your throat again and drop your shoulder blades in place so they're set. Press your hands together, pause. Wait until you feel the action in the chest and in that subscapular area. Keep pressing those hands together. All the while you're doing that, draw your elbows in to tap or come close together. Open, press your hands in, check out that tummy, make sure that those muscles are engaged. Oftentimes when we're sitting, we overstretch our ribcage, drop that ribcage in to neutralize your, your spine. Hands press in, feel it in the chest and in the subscapular muscles. Draw the elbows in to tap. Two more, open, press the hands in, draw your elbows in, are you guys feeling Good at home? Are you drinking wine? Are you drinking tea? Are you just really concentrating on the fascia stretches? Shake it up. Inhale. And exhale. All right, rib cage. This one can be a little tricky because it's very easy for our body to kind of shimmy out of certain areas that are tight that we actually want to stretch. We think a lot about our limbs, not as much about the area right here. And I found with fascia work throughout my mid-body, I can see extraordinary benefits. That achiness that I used to feel waking up in the morning, that's pretty much gone. I almost have to lift my ribcage up to release that space and kind of crumble as I've been doing that. And I don't do that as often. Not gonna lie, once in a while for sure. But I probably have the fascia stretching as much as I should. Lateral stretch, rib cage. What's the rule? Shorten, activate, move in the opposite direction. First, take one arm up overhead. Take the other hand and grab at the wrist. So the arm that's above in the fist, lower it to that same side. From here, I'm still planting down. I want you to sit your body weight in that same leg that the elbow's down. I'm gonna resist my elbow down, but I think about activating from my rib cage as well as the arm. So everything is going down. It takes me a moment to get there. Once you have it, keep resisting towards the floor, let the other arm win, and bring you up to center, and if you're okay, maybe a little bit past. Doing another one typically feels different the second time doing it. Resist elbow down, activate the rib cage. You have control over how much resistance you're using. Bringing yourself up, and over. Drop it down, resist it down. Body weight is going into the leg on the same side. One more time. Bring that elbow down, drop down. Activate, I'm just feeling some tissues moving and I felt the crack in my back too. You might get some creeps and cracks, natural adjustments for the body, so a bonus. Switching to the other side. Reset the posture, rib cage and chin tuck. Other arm up overhead, grab at the wrist. Lower that elbow. I tend to shift away, shift more into the side that you're reaching or bending down to. Resist the elbow down, 
but also resist from the rib cage. Keep resisting. Every time I do this right side, I get a little nervous system kind of prickly feeling in my rib cage in the front. For me, partly it's because of the way my baby was situated when I was pregnant. And I have a little scar tissue that's built up from that. If anyone's experienced that, please let me know. And if you're finding that when you're doing this, you're experiencing a lot of craziness, because it is quite interesting when you start to do fascia stretches for the rib cage. Send me a PM, write a comment, and be happy to talk with you more about it. One more time, raise this down. Feel the resistance continue the entire time. Let it rest. That arm get tired doing it? Again, bonus, you're strengthening your body as you're stretching fascia. You have the opportunity to do it all on your own. Let's go down to the legs. We don't want to forget about them. Take one foot, plant it in the ground, and bring that other ankle up to the thigh. I have short legs, so I like to lift my heel up on the one that's on the ground. But wherever you feel that you can get your pelvis level, it's very easy to scoot out of that neutral spine when you cross one leg over. So hip bones, imagine head legs facing directly forward. And then plant that leg and foot down into the floor as your base and foundation. So to stretch the piriformis, which is a glute muscle, oftentimes we bring that knee up to our chest and we pull it a little bit further. This is opposite. You want to open it to start, shortening that area first. Take both hands to the underside of the knee. I like to have one hand underneath here and I like to go up and over with the other. So I have a good grip, so I have power to pull. I'm going to resist and you're going to resist, your knee to the floor and your ankle into your thigh. Everything's resisting straight down. Pause. Once you feel it in your glute for the leg that's crossed over, use the power of your arms to pull the knee up towards your chest. Mindful not to go too far. Open it without resistance. Press it down. Kick in your abdominals. They are going to help you a ton here. Keeping your spine supported. We always want to make sure our abs are engaged while we're doing these stretches. That way, we're building up that strength in our core to help support our spines and our backs. Two more. Open, resist down, feel it in that glute. Powerful arms bringing the knee up. One more time. Open, press down, press your ankle into your thigh. Notice when you do that, that the stretch changes a little bit. Pause. Take your hands to the inside of your knee here. We're going to stretch our adductors, our inner thighs. We're going to bring the knee up, resist up, feel it in the inner thighs, and use the strength of your arms to push the knee down. Knee starts up without resistance, resist it up into your hands, feel it in the inner thigh, powerful arms, push it down. One more time, knee up, press up. We're stretching also a lot of these attachments around the hip area where a lot of emotion tends to be held for a lot of people. So if you feel kind of a wave of emotion when you're doing these particular stretches, very normal and very good because that emotion probably would benefit from being released. Switching sides. Cross the ankle over. I'm going to lift my heel up here. I'm going to push still that foot down into the ground, activating that leg. Level pelvis, posture, tummy tight. Both hands go to the outside or underneath the knee. Press your knee to the floor and your ankle into your thigh. Once you feel it in your glute, hold. Then powerful arms bring the knee up towards your chest. Open without resistance. Press down. Smile, laugh, breathe deep, whatever you need to do to make this the most efficient for you. Press down. I like to give my core a lot of focus here because as I do, I can just feel so many other beneficial things happening as I'm doing this. One more time, press that knee down. Maybe go a little bit more, a little extra resistance, extra power in your arm. Maybe you have more than you think or ease off, either way. Keep your knee up. Take your hands to the inside of the knee. Stretching the adductors or inner thighs, press your knee up into your hands. Reestablish your posture. Use the strength of your arms to push the knee down. Maybe knee forward to get a little extra range if you feel like you want a little bit more space. Knee up, resist up, and 
press that knee down. Letting that breath flow. One more time up, raises up, and pressing down. I'm so happy to see you guys joining me. I hope you're feeling good at home. On cross, shake it up. We're moving down to the floor. Hamstrings, quads, and low back. Find a moment or two here. I'm going to do one more little adjustment so we have better view of the ground. Hey, Roberto. Hey, Carol. Oh, I love it. You guys can see my little notes there. Awesome. Very good. Down to the floor. Here we go. Low back stretch. Finding a comfortable position. This is a good opportunity for you to use that pillow or blanket that I mentioned in the beginning. Bring your feet hip width apart. Before you go into the, the actual fascia stretches, settle yourself in first. Drive those shoulder blades down your back. Take your sacrum, that triangular bone at the base of your spine. Connect that with the floor, not your lower back, not to start. Find your connection, 50% body weight in both legs. Now imagine your footprint in the sand. So you have even contact with both feet into the ground. Take a deep breath in to stay. Big exhale out. Connect yourself to the floor. Ground down. That too, just that grounding, affects your fascia and your nervous system. Let's your body know that you're going to move. Bring one leg up to 90-90 and the other leg up to meet it. Take both hands and you're going to wrap them. I'm going to clasp right here underneath your legs. You're going to start by extending your legs as far away from you as you can reach. Either point or flex your feet. Keep resisting. Sorry, one second. That's what you get for my video. <laughs> Resist your legs away from you. Pause. Feel this in your hamstrings. Feel this in your glutes. Ask your glutes to show up a little bit more and they will. Keep resisting away and then use the power of your arms to pull your knees towards your chest. Head can be up or it can be down. Straighten your arms, resist your legs away, pull your knees to your chest. If you've done physical therapy and you've done a knee to chest stretch, this is a really good one to do in combination or instead of making sure that it's okay for your body and your practitioner says it's okay as well. Resist away, let's flex your feet to change that. Keep resisting the legs away, pull the knees into your chest. One more time, resist away. I'm actually really doing this with a lot of resistance as we're doing this class right now, so I'm getting hot. So I hope you are too. It feels good. And let it rest. Take a deep breath in. Ground your feet down. Get that nervous system to talk to your feet. Hamstrings. Who doesn't need a hamstring stretch, right? First, bring one leg in towards your chest and grab underneath the leg. Extend your leg up to wherever you feel comfortable. Curling up if you're able to, getting a little extra lift. Straighten your arms away from you so your leg is as far away from you as you possibly can reach. Your resistance is going away. So we shorten the hamstring. We're resisting it in that shortened area. Use the strength of those arms again and pull the knee and leg towards your chest. Head can be up, head can be down. Leg starts away, resist away, draw your knee in. Two more. Reach it away, resist, pull in. Try to keep that simple equation in your mind. Open it without resistance. I'm gonna bring my head down for this last one. Resist away, powerful arms. Keep going, maybe have a little extra space here. And release. Take that leg down to the ground, flex your foot and tap it into the ground. Check in with your pelvis, make sure you didn't drop down on either side, stay as level as you can. Tighten your tummy, press that heel down for five, four, three, two, and one. Switch sides. Neutral spine, other leg up to the sky. Feel what it feels like before we do the fascia stretch. I feel tight right about here. Where do you feel tight? Both hands go behind the knee. Curl it up if you're able. Extend your arms away. Resist your leg in the opposite direction. Feel it in the back of your thigh, your hamstrings, and then get that root involved. Talk to it. Let it work more. Powerful arms bring the leg in to the chest. Maybe you keep that up. Maybe you bring it down. 
Arms extend, legs stretches away, resist the leg, legs can go straight down to the floor. Keep engaging, draw that leg in, breathing. Two more, reach it away, pull it in. Is your pelvis neutral? Are your arms working evenly? Does your neck feel stiff? Maybe your neck feels better than you thought it would since we started with the neck stretch in the beginning. Head comes down to rest. Take that leg down, flex your foot, tap. Nervous system gets all the way down to that foot. Hold it, press that heel down. When you clear fascia from that big area like your hamstrings, all of a sudden that muscle has more um, effective contraction and it can do more for you. But it can get lost in the mix because all of a sudden that fascia releases and the nervous system is like, wait a sec, all of a sudden I can get there easier. It's a good thing that this grounding helps. Quads. Take the opposite leg up to the sky. Both hands grab behind the knee just as we start at the other leg. Take the other one, now my leg's gonna do the work and cross that leg, that ankle on top of the other ankle. Let me give you a little bit more here. I'm gonna be stretching the fascia on the leg that's underneath. By doing that, I start up, I resist up. You wanna feel that quad, so I'm doing a quad stretch. So I want my quad shortened and activated. Now use the strength of the leg that's on top to push that heel down, bending at the knee so you have that movement. You're strengthening your hamstring on that other side. Leg starts up, kick up, and the other foot's gonna win and draw that down. Two more, start up, press up, and use the strength of the other leg to push down one more time. Leg is up. Press up, pause. Let's take a pause. Let's move slower on this one. Think about that quad. Is it resisting? Are you able to maintain the resistance as the other leg brings it down? Hug your knees to your chest. Release your head side to side. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Other leg up to the sky. Crossing the other one on top. Both hands grab behind your knee. Curl up or stay down. Press that bottom foot up to the sky, activating your quad at the front. Once you have that, keep it. Let the knee bend as the other leg overpowers it and brings it down towards your glute. Leg up, press up, and other leg powers it down. Strengthening that hamstring. I really feel my hamstring working when I'm stretching the quad on the other one. One more time, up. Raise this up and carry it down. Knees to your chest. Just rest. Take a deep breath in. Take note. Maybe you're feeling new things in your body and in your muscles. Maybe they're shaking. That's okay. If they're shaking, you're doing really good work and you're changing some of that fascia. A lot of us have never had our fascia worked on, let alone us doing it on our own. Moving on to a child's pose position, up onto the hands and knees. Feel free to use that blanket or your mat to roll it up on your knees if you feel that the knees need a little extra cushion. Starting with your knees apart and your feet together. Walk yourself down onto your hands and knees. To stretch in child's pose, we're stretching the chest again and also our lats right about here. To shorten those areas, Bring your body weight forward over your hands, much like doing a knee push-up. Your resistance is pushing down with the hands and pulling back, almost in a V, like you want to slide the heels and hands underneath you towards your belly button. Bonus here, your core is working. You're lifting that belly, maintaining that flat back. Your knees will naturally resist forward. Take a moment, shift your body weight forward, press your hands down and back towards your knees, your knees forward towards your hands. Keeping the belly lifted, keeping your resistance, peel your hips back towards your hips, keeping neck in neutral spine. Keep pushing down. I'm losing my resistance here, so that's as far as I'm going to go. Bring yourself back up without resistance. Start your resistance again. Chest is active. Lats are active. Keep peeling yourself back, but keeping the hands pressing down and back the whole time. Two more times. Shift forward. Resist the hands back. Pull back. Challenge yourself a little extra. Push down the heels and the hands. One more here. Find your resistance in the chest, in your lats. Keep it. 
Peel yourself back. And release. Good. All right. That one is awesome. I like to do it on a countertop. If I'm cooking, I'm like, oh, I just need to kind of get myself moving. Place your hands on the counter. Place your hands on the sink. Grab a hold. Press down. And walk yourself back. You can go to the right, which feels awesome. The left. You can do all sorts of different variations of child's pose. And just once you're done, it's like you have this newfound posture and openness across your whole upper body. Coming up to standing now, we're going to finish up with some calves and some hamstrings and a little inner and outer thigh. I want you to see how versatile this work is where you can do the fashion stretches sitting down on the floor or standing up. I'm going to modify my camera again real quick so that you can get a better view in standing. So my head's not chopped off the entire time. Hello. Hey, Sandy. Hey, Beth. Love that you guys. Hey, so exciting to see you. All right, I apologize if, if this isn't the most perfect view. There's that chair again. Let me go up a little bit more. All right, thanks for bearing with me, guys. Moving around a lot in this live class. No, oh, not quite there, am I? Let's go up a little bit more. I want you to see my feet, but. All right. Tummy's tight, back is straight. Back up, 
Three more. Resist. And bend that knee forward. Good. Two more. You can change your pace. You can go slower. You can go faster. There's a lot of variables and different ways you can do this work. Sometimes I throw in some core work, which is really fun. Resist in opposite directions. And there you have calf fascia stretch. Bring your feet together. Find that groundedness again. Root down. 50-50 footprint. Mount pose. Deep breath in. And exhale. You might have more access to your foot function now. So when you're walking around, see if you feel a difference with that. Roll those ankles out a little bit. Moving on to the hamstrings. This can get to be a little confusing. We're really used to you know, kicking our leg up on something and reaching forward for that hamstring stretch or reaching down and bouncing. Try to think of it as in the past, fascia stretching in the future. To do that is actually quite simple, but it takes a couple reps to get used to it in the beginning. Take one foot forward, one foot back, not as wide as we just did with the calves. A little bit closer together. I would say there's about a foot distance. My feet are hip width apart, but just about a foot distance forward and back. We're gonna be stretching the fascia in the front leg, so behind this side here. To do that, we shorten it. That's where we start forward a little bit here. We add activation, number two, and move in the opposite direction. You can either keep your front foot flattened down or bring the toes up to distinguish that hamstring a little bit more. Hands can be wherever you're most comfortable. Prayer or hips are my preferred hand position. Your resistance. Press that front heel down and back, like you want to slide that heel back behind you, but it's not going to move. Once you have that action, that contraction in that hamstring, bring your hips back as you bend that knee slightly, so you're going back and down with your pelvis. Take a look here that your back is flat and that bob, that knee, is behind your toes. Make sure not to lock out the leg that you're stretching in front. Micro bend the entire time. Back up. Front heel presses down and back. Once you have it, draw the hips back and down. This is where my injury was, where my scar tissue was, so this feels very different, stretching this side compared to the other side. But I feel like I need it. Every time I do it, it gets a little bit better. And afterwards, I feel like I could do anything. Ride my bike, go for a run. One more time. Down and back. Pull the hips back. You're doing basically a unilateral squat on the leg that you're standing on. So there's your bonus there. Back up. Shake it out. This really gets that fascia worked up from the attachment of your hamstrings on your issue tuberosity or your butt bone all the way down, maybe even behind the knee a little bit. If you're feeling too much behind the knee, you need to bend the knee a little bit more. Separate your feet on the other side. Switching it up. Toes up or toes down or switch it up as you're doing it to feel the difference. Square it up, transverse, that's a deep core muscle. Underneath all those other layers, engage. Tighten up that lower abdominals. And hands, chest, hips, wherever you feel. Micro bend the knees. Front heel resists down and back. Once you feel it in that hamstring, maybe get the glute engaged a little bit more, talk to it. Hips go back and down. Keep with the resistance. If the resistance falls off, then Start again. Back up. Resist the heel down and back. Pull. Hips back. Look down at the knee. Make sure it's behind your toes. Tummy is tight. Back up. Three more. Find that resistance. Pull your hips back. Breath is moving. Good. Back up. Resist and pull back. Good. Last. Let's do one more here. Last one. Feel it. Pause. Let's go a little bit slower. Draw your hips back, keep that resistance going, breathe through it, don't let it go, stay with it, micro bend that knee. One more second and back up. Shake it out, ground it down. Side to side, ITB band. Who out there has tight ITB bands? Probably a lot of us. Our ITB band is fascia. It is, it's a, like a sheath of saran wrap that gathers from the knee to the hip. When this ITB band gets tight, it pulls everything over to it. It weakens this medial quad muscle it's called your vastus medialis. A lot of times that can lead to chronic knee pain. 
So you might be used to foam rolling, which is great. This is something that you can do on your own anywhere you are. Starting with your feet wide. You're going to take a moment to ground, 50-50 footprint, as I mentioned. Resist your legs out. Once you feel it on the outside of both of your thighs, that's when you begin to move. So this is position one. Activate resistance, legs out, number two. Move number three. Bending one knee. Make sure you don't twist towards the knee. That knee, keep your body forward. Pelvis just goes back and down to create that space. I'm pushing a little extra on the leg that is straight. Think of pushing the toes into the ground too. Come back up without resistance. Ooh, my legs are shaking. Resist both legs out. Focus on the outside of the thigh. Bend the other knee. Feel those toes pushing into the ground in that straight leg. Go down a little bit deeper. Keep that knee that's bending behind your toes. Tummy tight. Resist out. Let your breath move. And down. Back up. Resist out. Feel it. Engage. Hands to your ear, hands to your hips. Breath is moving. Especially at the end here. See if you can give yourself a little bit extra. Resist out. Keep pressing that straight leg out, 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 out as the hips go down and back, down and back, down and back. Back up the center without resistance. Last time, raise this out. Tummy tight, pelvic floor lifted up. Draw your hips back. Stay with it. Breathe, smile, laugh, find joy, and back up. All right, now it's gonna get tricky. We're gonna to switch to the inner thighs, but it's gonna look very similar to what you just did. But we don't start up, we start over. Bending one knee, take a look down, making sure the knee is not past your toes. Bring it back if it is, hips back. Now our resistance is going in. So resist both legs in, but we're going to focus on the inner thigh of the leg that's straight. Feel that resistance once you have it. Keep it as you bring yourself back to center. Over to the other side, resist your legs in. Feel it on the inner thigh of the straight leg. So happy to see you guys joining me. So exciting. What, what a great thing to do on a Wednesday rainy night inside, right? Resist your legs in. Keep resisting them in. Good. Let your body move. Let it breathe. Ask more of it. Resist your legs in. Fascia stretching your inner thigh. One more each side. Down. Resist in. Feel that resistance. Draw yourself up. Last time. Down. Check in with your posture. Tummy tight. Resist your legs in. Moving back up to center. Heel toe back together. Ground down. Mountain pose. Shoulder blades gliding down your back, rib cage in. That groundedness, that feeling that you're rooting down, much like in yoga class, is also affecting the fascia throughout the whole body. Take a moment to separate your feet a little bit longer. Resist your legs out really light, about half of what you just did. Lift your pelvic floor, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, find a gentle roll down, bringing your chin to your chest, and let one vertebrae go at a time. Micro bend your knees, head and shoulders release. Finding a forward roll, resisting your legs out the whole time. Inhale and exhale, roll it up. Keep resisting your legs out. You're creating resistance as you're rolling down. Shoulder blades roll up and back and down. Mountain pose. Thank you for following along with me for our introduction to fascia stretching. Please comment. Leave a message if you have any questions from what you learned tonight. There's so much more information, but I didn't want to be on live Facebook for three hours tonight, although I definitely could have. Um, you can find me at, at FashionFixMN. That's my FashionFix Facebook page. Or on Instagram, hashtag FashionFix11. Or if you search FashionFix on YouTube, if you scroll down a little bit, my channel should pop up. So I'd love for you to subscribe. Once you do, you'll have access to a lot more videos. Like I said in the beginning of this class, you'll have more specific videos for the chest, some of the IT, B-band. Usually it's a combination of two different areas of the body in a fascia stretch. And there's always more videos being posted all the time. So feel free to share it with your friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is a totally free workshop. And with everything going on right now, I'm happy to offer that. But of course, we're all in this together. But if you'd like to make a donation to Fashion Fix, you can find me on Venmo at Erin Teats 11. 
but don't feel like you have to. I just want to throw it out there and just happy to be here, just happy for anyone to learn this, this new work. Think about any young children that you have in your life, if you have children, nieces, nephews, friends, and what it might be like for them as young athletes to stretch this way, a way that's safer, more effective, their potential is endless. And I think about what would have been my course and journey in life had I not had this injury from being an athlete and a dancer. And I'm happy that I did because here I am today talking to all of you. So all these young kiddos, this fascia stretching would really, really benefit them. When I stretch my son, he giggles like it's the funniest thing ever. Um, thank you again so much. Try it, feel good. I am here because I want to be here for all of you. Have an awesome, awesome Wednesday. Wake up feeling really good and less achy tomorrow. Bye-bye.